Hey, this is Antonio. Welcome back to my channel. Let's have some fighting words. In this video, I want to talk about the return of Adrian the Problem Broner. It's been a long time since he's been in the ring, um, and I'm just happy to see him back. I'm happy to see him doing something productive with his life and with his time. And hopefully he can stay in the ring. Hopefully he can stay busy. Hopefully he can get three, I don't know, maybe two, three fights this year. That, I, I think we would benefit as fans, but I also think he would benefit just in his livelihood and kind of the way he lives his life. He can be a little reckless. So it would give him something to do and it would give him a, a focus and a goal to hit. So without further ado, let's jump into this list. I've made a list of um, possible opponents for him to fight. And I believe they would all literally jump at it to fight Adrian Broner. Um, so actually, let me say this before I jump into it. If you like the videos, please like, please share these videos with your friends colleagues, you go to the gym, whoever, and please subscribe to my channel. There's a lot of things that I would love to do. Unfortunately, you need a certain amount of subscribers to do a lot of things that I would like to do. So again, please like, please share, and please subscribe. Now let's jump back into this. The first person I have on here, he and the problem have been going back and forth for a few years now, and nothing has ever come to fruition. So now that he's back on the scene and Adrian is coming back to the scene, why not make it happen? I'm talking about Regis Prograde. Uh, they, they've had a lot of back and forth via social media. And, you know, Regis Prograde has said several times, I want that fight. Make that fight happen. I would love that fight. Uh, in which case, you would get Andrew Broner kind of brushing him off like, yeah, that's easy work. You know, I, I would handle him no problem. So there you have it. That's the backstory. Now, looking at that and just thinking about... The, the style matchup, I think it will work right up the alley of Adrian Broner. Um, not to say that he can beat Prograce or, or vice versa, that Prograce can beat him. But I think stylistically, I think they work great together in contrast to each other. Um, Adrian, Adrian Broner, like I've said, and you know, many people have critiqued about him, he doesn't throw a lot of, a lot of punches. And as the fight goes on, he really does preserve those punches. However... Regis Prograde doesn't throw a lot of punches, and he preserves himself as well. Regis Prograde doesn't have the doesn't have the best legs. He's slick up top, you know, he can he can slip shots really well, but his legs not so much. And he's gonna walk you down. He's gonna be right there. It's gonna be fun in the sun between those two. You have a great defensive genius, I would say, in Adrian Broner, and I would say somebody who. You know, if, if he feared the opposition more, I think he could be a really good defensive fighter in Regis Prograde. He typically doesn't fear what's coming at him. And I believe that's a, that has a lot to do with the fact that you don't see him backing up or doing anything else much because he doesn't really fear what's coming at him. Um, I mean, even when he fought Josh Taylor, which, you know, Josh Taylor's a big dude. I, I always said, and I will say, Josh Taylor's going to finish out his career at 154. And... Prograde was right there the whole time. He wasn't backing up. He wasn't backing down. He was literally there the whole time. And that fight was literally won by punches, a few punches, you know. So that goes to say a lot about him. Now, when you match those two together, I think they play off well with each other. I, I think I think Prograde would walk him down naturally. Although I do think Adrian Broner is bigger naturally, I still see Prograis walking him down. But that works perfectly in the hands of Adrian Broner. That's what he wants you to do anyway, because he's going to just, you know, shell up and, and fire off. So it doesn't really matter to him anyway. But you never know. So that's just one fight on the table. Now, the next, again, I, I've just really been big on him lately. Uh... Florian Marku. Now, I know they're from different promotions, and we all know how that goes, but I don't want to get into that because we all know that anything can be made, okay? Literally, anything can be made. We had Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder. Anything can be made, you know, and anything can be made. I, I, if there's a mo enough money and enough interest, anything can be made. I mean, you literally had Conor McGregor come over and fight Floyd Mayweather. They're, they're not even in the same sport, so literally anything can be made. So, with that being said, I think it's a fun fight. I think both of them have a huge fan base, and I think it would do probably some record-breaking numbers. And that depends on where you put it at, to be honest with you. 
AB, you can't go wrong with him in the States. But then again, Florian Marku, you bring him to the UK, he's going to sell that joint out. So either way, you're going to get your bang per buck. You're also getting, once again, two guys who are coming to fight. Now, Florian Marku is a little bit more different. He's a little bit more of a classical boxer, you know. And again, he stylistically works with Adrian Broner because neither one of them throw a lot of punches. Florian Marku is consistent with his punches, but he will only throw one no more than two at a time unless he feels his opponent is hurt. So again, stylistically, it will work for Adrian Broner. Plus, again, he would walk Adrian Broner down, which would work in Adrian Broner's style. It would just work with them. They, they, they would flow. It would mesh very well, you know. So there you have it. You have Florian Marcoux behind that jab because he's going to pump that jab out the whole entire fight. And then you have Adrian Broner shelling up and just firing off the two. I mean, you're going to get a good fight. You're going to get a good fight because at some point it's going to get close. And more than that, Marku is bigger than Adrian Broner. So I could see him, you know, easily getting Broner to the ropes, but Broner is comfortable in the ropes. Now, I know what a lot of you are thinking. Why are you bringing up Florian Marku and he's fighting at 147? Well, Adrian Broner has fought at 147. He did not do so well at 147, which is why he went down back down to 140. However, when he did go back down to 140, he didn't even make the weight. I think he weighed in at like 142 or 143. He didn't even make the weight. So I'm just trying to be realistic with who he could fight. And, you know, also wait. Because now, listen, I don't think they're on the same level in terms of skill. So I could see... Flo uh, Adrian Broner going up to 147 to fight Florian Marku. I actually could see that. I don't see any issue with that. Um, I, I don't, but I also don't see Adrian Broner fighting Regis Progress at 140. I don't see any issue with that. It's not like we're trying to reinvent the wheel. I don't believe in this next run in his career um, that he's saying, I'm going to unify in a, in a division. I think at this point, it's all about money fights. I think it's all about, you know, I don't think it's a thing of legacy anymore. I don't think it's a thing of unifying anymore. I just think it's about money fights and putting on exciting fights for the fans. And if you were to go back up a few pounds, seven pounds, literally, and just go up and fight Florian Marku, I don't have any issue with that. And I don't feel like anybody's going to have any pushback for that. And with the amount of interest that... Broner brings, I don't even think Florian Marku would have any problem with that. So there you have it. The next would be Connor Ben. Connor Ben has been chirping for Adrian Broner fight for a good two years, easily. And he wants that. Um, I've never heard Adrian Broner say anything about Connor Ben. I never even heard him say his name. I, I do remember there was one uh, interview in which case Connor Ben's name was mentioned. And Adrian Broner just kind of chuckled to himself, like meaning I know who you are, but not really. Yeah, I'm not really thinking about you. And granted, at that time, Conor Bennett was not what he is right now. He's hot right now, like he's smoking right now. And his stock has gone up since he once said that he would like to fight Adrian Broner. And for Adrian Broner to come back, I feel like he needs somebody that, that would motivate him. I think a Conor Ben would motivate him. I mean, I think all these guys, Regis Progress would motivate him. I think Florian Marku would motivate him. But I feel like a Connor Ben would motivate him in another way. Um, you, you know, and let me just break down these personalities. I, I feel like Regis Progress kind of has the same, you know, street personality as, as Adrian Broner. And I think that would motivate him in one way. But... You know, Regis Progress never shows up with like a six pack or anything like that. So I'm not saying that he's not working hard, but I believe he could work harder. Then you have Florian Marku, who just wants to compete and he just wants to make a name for himself. He just really wants to cut, you know, uh, out of this stone stone of boxing. You know, his name edged out in it. There's nothing wrong with that. And it's totally competitive. It has nothing to do with anything personal. They don't have any history nor back, you know, story or anything like that it would be totally competitive. Then you have Conor Ben. Now, granted, they have not said anything to each other in the past. Conor has repeatedly said that he would love to fight Adrian Broner. Okay, 
But when you look at those two personalities, the minute you put a microphone in front of those two, trust me, it will be worth the time. It will be worth the time. Because unlike Florian Marku, he will talk, you know, but just because, you know, the, the language barrier, in which case he speaks perfect English, but just meaning like he can't flow off the tongue like, say, a Connor Ben can. And Regis Prograde is not the biggest talker in the world. You know, he's just not. So you get Connor Ben. Oh, that's good TV right there. That's good press conference right there. Okay. And then you get somebody who you know is going to come 150% ready and in shape and ready for battle. Now, the next is going to be a little controversial, but why not? Uh, listen, if Adrian Broner comes back and he's fighting at 140, guess who? Guess who's in that weight class now? Gervonta Tank Davis is in the weight class now. Why not have, you know, once friends and now they're fighting and they're more than likely still friends. But, you know, when Tank came onto the scene, he was introduced through Adrian Broner. And he was, you know, it's my little brother and da 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 Well, the little brother has grown up. The little brother has blossomed into this, you know, main attraction. You know, this, this, he's that, you know, and you have Canelo and you have Tank. They're both faces of boxing right now. Say what you want, but they're both faces of boxing right now. Now, listen, Tank recently came up to 140, looked impressive, and he took a belt. Why not have those two fight? <laughs> Listen, we have a story. We have intrigue. We have all the trimmings of a, of a beautiful fight. Not only that, these two have been in training camp together. These two have um, kind of pretty much come up together. I mean, granted, Adrian Broner was already in the, you know, the professionals first, but came up together you have everything you need. They know each other's fighting style. You have everything you need. They might actually have to break up the camp because they work with the same trainers. You literally have everything you need just for that fight to happen. It would be something else. And like I said, the back and forth between camps, everything would be, you know, whether you like it or not, it would be personal. Listen, how I feel about you after the fight and how I feel about you before the fight are gonna be two different things. I'm gonna hug you afterwards. But right now, I got to put you back in your place. You're still my little brother. And I, I think that storyline would actually play out really well. Last but not least, um, there's one person that I think would be fun for Adrian Broner. I, I honestly do think Adrian Broner would beat him and probably with no problems. But nonetheless, he would be fun. Rolly Romero. Who else? <laughs> like That would be a fun fight. Rolly Romero versus Adrian Broner would be fun. It would be fun from the back and forth because he's going to talk more than all the guys that I listed prior. He's going to say the things that none of them are going to say. He's going to do comedic, you know, videos and all these things. And it would be fun for boxing. Again, it would be fun. You're talking about amazing fights. And again, I think Adrian Broner is coming back for fun, amazing fights that are pleasing to the fans that are going to generate money and generate intrigue. I don't think he's coming back to try to get all the belts in a division. You know, I mean, obviously that, listen, if, if, it, if it turns into that and he's on a roll, let the good times roll. But I don't believe he's in it for that right now. I just think he wants to make a lot of money and stay focused on something and keep himself out of trouble, to be quite frank with you. But that's my list of possible opponents for Adrian Broner when he comes back. I look forward to hearing whom he's going to fight, and I would love to do a fight breakdown for that. And in the meantime, you tell me what you think. Drop your comments down below. What do you think about the list that I presented? How do you think Adrian Broner stacks up against these guys? And as always, please like, please share, and please subscribe to my channel.